This is a safety video for people who may visit the World Heritage Site of Skellig Michael, an island in the Atlantic Ocean off Southwest Ireland. Visitors are attracted to Skellig Michael by its spectacular beauty and wildlife, and the extraordinary early Christian monastery, beehive cells and other archaeological remains. The monastery sits on one of the island's two peaks, and to access it, visitors must climb steep ancient stone staircases which present various safety challenges. There are 600 steps leading up Skellig Michael to the monastery, and some 12,000 visitors of all ages visit the Skellig annually and negotiate these steps safely and without undue difficulty. However, if you are particularly unfit, have vertigo or are compromised medically, you may find climbing these steps difficult or beyond your capabilities. Skellig is not a place for young children unless you're completely confident of looking after them on a steep island where there are no safety rails or barriers on the ancient paths. There are no visitor facilities of any kind on the island. There is no water, food or shelter. You will be on a remote barren rock exposed to the weather. For your journey, you need to bring enough food and drink to see you through the whole day. Sun cream is important, as even though it may be cloudy, you may still get a lot of exposure to ultraviolet light. You should ensure that you have waterproof clothing, both for the boat journey and in case it rains while you are on Skellig. It's advisable to pack your snacks and your waterproof clothing in a small backpack to allow your hands to be free for safer walking. Footwear is very important. Wear good walking boots if you have them, or footwear with a grippy sole and good ankle support that you will be both comfortable and confident in when climbing up and down the island's stone staircases. Please note that there are no toilet facilities at all on the boats or on Skellig Island. In other words, you will have no toilets from the time you leave the mainland until you return back to the mainland, perhaps six hours later. Before departing for Skellig by boat, please take time to read the safety notice on the pier at Port McGee Harbour. The licensed passenger boats leave from various harbours in Kerry and can take 12 passengers. The crossing to Skellig Michael can take anything from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the boat used and weather encountered en route. The boat journey is across open ocean, which can be rough and wet, and you should wear waterproof clothes and take precautions if you're prone to seasickness. The boats drop visitors off at a landing on the eastern side of the rock, and this landing can be exposed to rough seas, and landing can sometimes be difficult or impossible if the waves are too high. Take particular care when getting off the boat, and ask for help if you feel you need it. A safety leaflet has been produced to help you plan your visit, and it's available from the Boatmen or the Visitor Centre. Please ask for a copy. Once you've landed on the island, a short flight of steps leads to a lighthouse path which circuits the south side of the island at low level. The lighthouse path is not steep or difficult. A short way along from the landing is a small building with a sign containing valuable information about visiting Skellig. Please take time to read it. At some points along the lighthouse path, you will notice warning signs about the possibility of rockfall from above. And at a certain section particularly prone to rockfall, you'll find the path has a protective roof to guard against this. A 10 or 15 minute 500 meter walk from the boat landing up the lighthouse path will bring you to a point where you can no longer follow it as it's blocked off by the huts of island workmen and guides. This is also the point where you can access the old stone steps that you can climb up to the higher parts of Skellig Rock and the old monastery. You cannot start to climb the stone steps until you've had a safety talk at this point from one of the Skellig guides. It's not wildly dangerous, but it's more dangerous than your backyard, perhaps. It's a place where you need to take an extra sense of responsibility for your own safety and for those around you. This is very important. The guides live on the rock during the summer months, and their instructions must be followed. If there is no sign of a Skellig guide, 
You must not start your climb up the steps, and you must wait at this briefing point until a guide arrives and gives you the safety briefing and allows you to proceed. The briefing takes only a few minutes and covers vital information on the steps, the conditions on the day, and what will happen at the monastery above, where guides will also be available to show you around. This briefing point also has some important safety signs that you must read before going any further. Some visitors decide at this point not to proceed up the steep stone staircase and relax at the bottom of the steps for their stay on the island. Once the guide has completed their briefing and given you permission to proceed, you can begin your journey up the steps. Please note that in most areas, you are not allowed to leave the stone stairs. Special care should be taken at the very start of the ascent, where there is a horizontal section which is quite narrow, with a steep drop on one side. A short chain has been bolted to the rock here for your safety. As you begin your climb, you will see the stone staircase rising ahead of you. This staircase dates back to antiquity and was originated by the early monks who came to Skellig more than a thousand years ago. Because these steps are very old, uneven and follow an irregular course, visitors should take good care when using them. Good technique is to walk in the middle of the steps, avoiding the edges. Pay particular attention when they are wet, as they can be very slippy. When climbing upwards, give way to visitors coming down. Stop on the outer side of the steps and allow them to safely come down the inside before you proceed upwards. The staircase often changes direction abruptly and visitors should watch out for and take special care on the sharp turns. A walking stick or ski pole is useful if you're experienced using one. Visitors with cameras should be very careful while on steep ground. And if taking photographs, check you have a safe stance and are not near an edge. Please don't leave the steps or disturb any rocks or vegetation. And nesting birds in particular must not be disturbed. If you are feeling the exertion or in any way unwell, please take time to rest. After 15 or 20 minutes, you will reach a valley known as Christ Saddle. And to the left or west as you arrive is the highest peak on Skellig. While to the right or east is the lower of the two peaks, on top of which you will reach the famous Skellig Monastery and its beehive cells. However, it's a good idea to have a rest in Christ Saddle between the two peaks and perhaps have a snack here before you ascend the final stage up to the monastery. Some visitors prefer to go directly to the monastery and have their lunch or snack in the saddle on their way down. From the valley, a steep set of stone stairs is clearly visible going upwards unless there is fog or rain. A chain has been provided on one side higher up for your safety and please use this both on the way up and particularly on the way down. This area is particularly prone to wind, so please take extra care. At the top of these steps, you will find the path is mostly wide and horizontal with few challenges for visitors, except for a very small number of small steps. This path leads to the entrance to the monastery. The first stone doorway has a low roof and care should be taken not to bang your head. And this entrance opens into an area bounded by stone walls. The final doorway passage into the inner monastery is also quite low, so care should be taken going through here as well. This passage brings you finally into the inner monastery enclosure and the beehive cells. Most visitors spend about 30 minutes exploring and being shown around the monastery before beginning their descent. Please pay particular attention to your descent of the stone staircase, as this is when accidents are most likely to occur. Safety is especially important on Skellig Michael, because it can take the accident and rescue services considerable time to get there in the event of an emergency. Descend slowly and carefully. 
If you feel at all lightheaded, sit down on the steps and take a rest. If you feel particularly unable to descend safely and that you're at risk of an accident, please sit down on the steps to one side. Seek assistance from a companion or other visitor. If you feel completely unable to move, sit and wait for a guide who will come down the steps once all visitors have left the monastery. On descent, you must also be very careful not to arrive too quickly at a turn and find yourself going straight on and off the edge. Descend slowly, as walking straight off a corner may bring you over a cliff, and fatalities have occurred on the island. After these turns, you arrive back at the narrow horizontal section, which has a sharp drop on your left and the safety chain bolted on the rock on your right. After this section, you are faced with the last few turns before arriving back at the base of the steps and the lighthouse path and where you had your initial briefing. We hope you enjoy your journey to Skellig and that this film may be useful in making it a safe experience.